In this lesson, we're going to we're going to work with our table a bit. Um, we're going to look at one how we can modify the structure for a table. Um, we want to add, say, a new column, or even remove a column, or simply change the type of a column. Uh, how we could do that. We're going to also look at how we can enter additional data or even edit. Uh, existing data. So what we're going to do first off is to make sure that we are, um, let's go back to Explorer here, we are in the Lesson 1 folder and so we'll minimize this back into FoxPro. And I can ask FoxPro to tell me what the current working directory is by saying print to the visual FoxPro desktop for the full path of the current directory. And so it is telling me that I'm in the default startup folder, which is Visual Fox Pro 9. And so I'm going to set my default folder to um, Tutorial Lesson 1. So we'll set default to, and this time I'm going to go ahead and use a question sign and have the Browse Folder dialog come up. And then I'll just navigate to my folder. So Tutorial Lesson 1, OK. And that's done. If I go back here and print full path, I'll see that I am exactly where I want to be. So I know that I have a table in here because I uh, recently created one in the last session. And to open a table, we use the use command. Um, for this, though, I'm going to go and show you how to use our data session window here. So we'll bring this up. We we'll also go to Windows here and select data session and we'll use the open command and because we're our default folder is where um, the file is it is displayed here I simply select it and click OK and so the table is opened in work area 1 by default once you open a table it's in work area 1 and we can have uh, multiple work areas um, for tables in Visual Fox Pro by default um, a table, as I said, is open in work area 1, but what I wanted to say was that a table must be opened in a work area. So if I wish to open another table, it would have to be open in another work area other than work area 1. Otherwise, my uh, current table would be closed if I were to open another table in the same work area. So this is showing me the alias of the table, which is the same as the table name, and we'll talk more about aliases um, later. Um, there are no relationships um, set up right now. If there were any, they would be displayed here. And uh, we'll be working with the data session window quite a lot, and so we'll get back to that. So what I want to do, first off, is to browse the data. I simply click the browse there. Notice that Visual Fox Pro types the command for me. Uh, likewise, when I open the table, Visual Fox Pro type the command out here and you're seeing some new stuff here in zero shared and uh, uh, we'll we'll look at that again later okay so uh, in our last session we created the table and we entered all of this information what I want to do right now is to modify the table structure so that we can enter uh, the city of all our friends here and um, and perhaps the zip code, or city, state, and zip code. So let's go ahead and modify the table. Um, to do that, we'll go back to our command window here, and we type modify structure. So this operates on the current table. Now it's still gray, that means I have done something wrong. I spelled modify wrong, so once it's blue, I'm good to go. Modify structure, and um, First off the bat, I notice that it says read only, so which means I'm not able to modify the structure. Notice that all my buttons are disabled, and I'm only allowed to cancel out of this table. Um, that is because I am not using the table exclusively. If we notice here in the status bar, record, uh, the status of the of the table says record unlocked which means it's being used shared. So let's get up to this now. So when we open a table using the data session, it opens the table in shared mode by default, and that means someone else on the network could have this table open in their 
um, instance of visual Foxboro and be working with the data in the table simultaneously with myself. Uh, seeing that we're here, the use in zero says use in the next available work area and um, work area one was the next available one so the system selected one. There is no work area zero. Zero is interpreted as the next available work area. So because this table is not being used exclusively I am not uh, permitted to to change it. So I can go ahead and I'm going to close the table. Notice just the use command and I'm going to reopen the table and use it exclusively. So I'm going to do that again from here. So I'll go open and uh, the dialog comes up. What I'll make sure to do is to check the open exclusive option here and then double click on my table and my table is now used exclusively and you can learn quite a lot by using the data session window. This is the clause you would type instead of shared as we did in the last um, uh, instance we can use exclusive now to say that we wish to use a table exclusively and this is allowed because no one else is using the table. If someone else had the table open on the network Visual Foxpro would give me an error if I try to open a table exclusively that is being currently shared with someone else. Notice the change in my status here. So I should be good to go to change this, the structure of this. So notice I don't have the read only and my buttons are all enabled. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to insert um, two rows here, two columns, sorry. One, two, and I'll change this one to city. I'll make this 20 and I'll change this to state make this 2 and we'll insert uh, another one uh, make this zip <coughs> and we'll make this a character type and we'll just store the first 5 of our zip so all these are, are character type um, fields so we go ahead and click OK and make structure changes permanent, yes. And Visual Fossil will preserve our existing data um, and uh, when we modify the table. So uh, let me just show you. So these tables are being shown at the end here even though I did create them immediately after the address and that's because Visual Fox uh, Visual Fox Pro appended the last clause whenever I use the data session window to browse a table. It says open the table in the last state that we had it. And so in the last state we only had these uh, five columns. These are new so it, it adds them to, to the end of the table. So if I remove last and just say browse, I should get it in the order that I did create them. So here we go. So right, uh, right from within the browse window, we can go ahead and actually uh, key data. So I could say this guy lives in New York, and uh, so we make up some some one two one one. Notice that Visual Fox Pro jumps to the next column once I've entered the maximum uh, number of of of, um, of characters permitted for this column, which we have stipulated as being five. So once I've entered up to the maximum, it automatically jumps to the next column. So I'm going to go ahead. Actually, um, so we can we can enter as I said in the browse window. We could also enter. Um, let me just close this out. Um, we could enter in the in the append mode, sort of like the append mode. It's actually called the change mode. So if I type change we would see the data uh, in a uh, detail format where I see the columns or the fields going down and um, the, the, uh, the, the data is to the right of the, of the fields and then each row is represented as a detailed band in its own right and I can scroll down so depending on which you prefer you can work with. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly um, enter the remaining um, information for for these guys. So just hang on a second here. So
So I've entered some fictitious uh, um, cities and states and some ridiculous uh, zip codes. And so I'll go ahead and close. I prefer to work in the browse mode myself, so I'll switch back to browse. And um, to edit a column, you simply navigate to a column. Uh, click within the column and begin typing. So using the backspace delete key as necessary. I'm missing an S here so I'll click there and type S. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to modify the table once more and remove the age column as we don't need it. We've got the date of birth already so I'll go ahead and close this. And uh, I could go here from this uh, the data session window, select properties and click on the modify button here and select this column and then click delete and that column is gone click OK, make structure changes permanent and we'll say yes. When we actually modify the a table structure, Visual Fox Pro actually creates a new table, brand new table and copies the data from the old table into a new table. If I were to switch back to um, Explorer, I should see a backup file of my previous table with all the data in there and this is a new table we created with city state zip and now I'm about to do it again so this one will get deleted this will come over here and then I'll have the new table anyway you can check that out for yourself um, later so we go yes and the data is copied over I click OK here and now I browse again I'll double click here to resize my columns and notice that I don't have the uh, age the age column anymore. So modifying the structure of a table is quite easy and to edit the data we simply navigate to any one of the records and any one of the columns and we we can make edit as we would in, in Microsoft Excel. So these are cells. So a row where a row intersect a a or intersects a column, we have a cell. 